Jürgen, first of all, you extended an invitation to Sven Joran Eriksson a few weeks ago. Nice news this week that he's taken you up on the offer and he's confirmed for the Legends game. How do you feel about that? Great. Absolutely great. I, I, I was always convinced that it will work out some way, and, and this is now really nice. Um, a legend coaches legends, um, so it's really cool. And uh, I was, I've never been here when the, the legends um, team played, but I know from everything that you can use the whole facility, the train on the pitch, play in the stadium, um, also train, train here on the training ground and play in the stadium. So um, uh, everybody who is involved in the organization tries to make it as um, as great as somehow possible, and I think all the guys uh, who sh show up here always enjoy it. Um, and now with Sven in charge, and I cannot say they will now play better because Kenny is the actual coach. Eh? <laughs> so now, with that experience on the bench, um, yeah, they should they should play a good game, and um, I'm really happy for Sven that he can have that opportunity. I can tell you, it's a good place to come. Are you run for it. I don't think so. Actually, I don't know exactly when it is. Uh, looking ahead to this game, though, team news. How's it looking for Mo? Will he be back? And obviously, disappointing news around Trent. And it looks like he's going to miss the, the Carabao Cup final. What can you tell us about that? And how are Dominic and Thiago as well? Uh, Mo is back in full training. Yeah, that brings him automatically in contention, of course. Um, anyway. uh, Ibu. <laughs> it's not suspended anymore. Joey is f fit again. Connor is back. Ali is back. So that's all positive. Uh, 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 Thiago, no, of, no. Um, and Trenadon, not. That's that's true. But I think I, we have to clarify a little bit. I, I I didn't really. I was not really aware of it. But I got now somehow um, the news as well that there was a discussion about um, we might have forced Trent back because two setbacks. That's true, and it's really unfortunate that nobody wants that and nobody's doing that. But um, different cases, different scenarios. Anyway, um, and. As long as I'm here, we never forced anybody back. We will never do. But we work in a in a high performance area. But it's like if you have the same injury, you are so you when you are fit after three days, and the guy after four weeks because he has to. They have to sprint stuff like this, whatever injury it is. So it's always about that, and we always try to catch the earliest moment. Unfortunately, when we catch that moment, nobody speaks about. It. Like with Maka. Now recently with Diogo, um, that's a job we have to do, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all. But it's that the last decision is then always by the player, and if you would always listen only to the player, then the players would play after two weeks, and then uh, then it's a real problem. So um, the boys were in the moment when they when they played, they were they were fit, but the situation told us then differently because it happened again. You never will never know if it happened would have happened anyway or if it just happened because there was something before. You will never know. Very, very unlucky and unfortunate, absolutely. Had that a couple of times in my in my time as a manager, obviously not only here. That can happen. It's not great, but nothing else. It says nothing about the quality of anybody is. I was it's, oh, the, the world we are living in is all the medical department. I'm not sure about that. There's nothing to do with that. We have to we have to bring the boys back as soon as possible, but never sooner than they are ready from our point of view. And this weekend you go first, so you get the opportunity to stretch the lead out to five points again, at least for a time. But what does past experience down at Brentford tell you that me saying that is much easier said than actually going through with it? That's what you always do, pretty much. <laughs> you say the easiest things and we have to deal with the reality. Um, um, yeah, yeah, super, super tricky, super tricky there. Um, the way to play and the way to set it up. Um, with or without Tony makes a difference. All the guys back from the African Cup of Nations makes a difference. Mopai found his feet makes a difference. Well organized set pieces, cheeky with rhythm breaks. And they want obviously when you are good at set pieces, so it makes sense that you get set pieces, so they want set pieces. <laughs> That's how it is. And it, it, it's you, how can you defend Brentford for 95 minutes by avoiding any kind of set piece? That's not possible in football. On top of that, they are not only set pieces, just really good at it. 
um, very compact defending, very good in counter-attack, very brave in these moments, have the speed and a clear idea, well-coached team. So, do I forget anything? Probably not. And an atmosphere in the stadium I can create, obviously, is, is really good. But saying all that, anyway, with what we want to do and where we want to end up the season, we have to be on top of our our game as well. And um, that means we have to be the team where they think in a similar way about, OK, if you defend that, then they do that. If you de do defend this, then they do that. So, And that's exactly the way we have to approach it. Um, and I'm really fine with the with the with the, the especially the resilience we showed recently. So it's just yes, good form. Then Arsenal, obviously a proper dip there. Then Burnley, a super difficult game. But again, the the, the the determination, the attitude we showed in this game, dealing with a really difficult situation um, in inside the squad. Um, I really I really liked a lot. And now we have to be at our best if you want to win. At Brentford, you definitely have to be at your best. It's a really, really smart, coached team. Um, quite unusual for teams in the Premier League to play the sort of two central strikers, and obviously Brentford do that with Tony and Mope. Um, is that threat something that you've been focusing on? It's not that rare. It might be that rare because, what can I say, if... Um, Chelsea plays uh, brings Gallagher, for example, whoever plays up front uh, there in that role. So this kind of clear striker. But actually, that's not that's not the problem. The problem is the balls you play to Tony and how he can. Um, I'm not sure deflecting is the right word, but it's much more purpose in. But um, how he can bring it in, in, in into the the next player. How they react on that. Their second ball game is, is second to none. They're really good at that. Um, but Tony is really smart in, in, in using his body in these situations. It's super difficult to get on the ball because if you don't get on the ball, he goes down. If you go get on the ball, then Tony goes down. They have a free kick, and you don't know what you want in these situations. Let the ball go through rather than creating a free kick. That's, that's the situation. How is that? Very smart what they do. It's exactly what I would do. I'm not sure, but could I do it? I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but it's very smart and keeps them for years now already and for the next years definitely in the, in the Premiership. So because it's uh, really and that's probably what, what Brentford wants. And um, so the, the development the club made in the last few years is, is really impressive. So um, the, the two striker thing is actually not the problem, but there are plenty other others. In this fixture last year. A year ago, just over a year ago, Brentford won it and Liverpool was sixth, 15 points off the top. Now here we are, it's radically different. Have you in any way been surprised by the pace of the turnaround? If I would have thought about it, I would have been surprised probably. I wouldn't have, would never have guessed that, but it's um, but I didn't. Um, we wanted to win the first game, but we didn't do at Chelsea, and then we wanted to win the second. So um, I think that's how it works. We were happy with the, and there was a moment I, I really remember when we, when, I re, when we realized there's a really good squad we have together here. So and now we have to use it, and you need luck, and you need <coughs> players available as long and often as somehow possible. Um, but no, I didn't really think about it. Um, and it's definitely, you be, you might be right with um, the, the points tally at that time was completely different, but it means nothing for this game. No, it's not a point we have, it's a point we can gain, and that's the next three out there. Super difficult. I'm pretty sure all the teams who are playing with us up there in the in the region of the table would say, OK, that's a game. If they do it, that's a game Liverpool might struggle. So we have to we have to make sure. Um, Brentford has more problems with us than we have with them. Jürgen, because of the horrendous injury problems you've had this season, You've had to call on the depth of the squad, which is obviously valuable. How valuable also has been the versatility within the squad, right through the pitch, if you look defensively, Joe Gomez to advise that. If you look in midfield, you've mentioned about Alexis McAllister playing as a six. He can play in other positions. Uh, Harvey Elliott in midfield and up front at the top end of the pitch. Diogo right across the, the front line. How important and how valuable can that be between now and the end of the season? Yeah, very. 
very important, very valuable. But in, in general, that's how a, a football squad should be, and um, it's a good sign in general for football how how players can, if you break down a little bit barriers in their own mind. Um, that's my position. So Joe is a different game. Joe, when I arrived here, I think the, the last few, in the time before I arrived, he played left back. Um, so showed as a very young kid he can play that probably but it was is a center half that if you can play left back it's obvious you can play right back that's what Joey did in a specific way very good um, unfortunately often enough for some reasons but uh, very good and now he plays the role either side um, it's a really good example for um, for versatility and, and 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 development and improvement and and the way I understand football anyway that the only real positioning is when you defend. So if you're a right back, you defend on right back usually. If you are a, a, a centre mid, you defend this kind of area when, the, when it's a clear situation, build up the opponent. If you lose the ball in any area, there's no position anymore for defending. That's the closest and if it's the number nine, if he's the closest, then he has to go there and defend. So that all, it's all different to the past when positions were positions and just play like this. No, it's it's good. It's good for football. It's good for us. Very good and very super helpful. Um, and you always will find arguments for this or that position, for this or that player. But we have to make decisions for the, the team on a day. So who is available, who is in which shape and who fits um, together in the best way. And um, obviously with the injuries we had um, so far, most of the time we really could sort it. Be with the boys we had away, but of course as well because of the boy, because the boys had rhythm, because they played before already. Nobody came in now and played didn't play for six eight weeks and then has to fill the role. That was didn't happen, so it, that was good so far. But yeah, still a long way.